All right. What's up, Welcome guys? Welcome to the Provoke and Inspire <laughs> podcast. What's up, fellas? <laughs> I'm just going to pretend like we weren't here for the last 20 or 30 minutes. We're just yeah. here right now. Woo. Yeah, I know. I know. It's all new. It's all spontaneous. <laughs> it's all full of adventure. Yeah, yeah. This <laughs> is not planned at all. Uh, Antonia brilliant. says peace, and we say peace, peace back. Thanks so flower. much for joining us. Uh, this is we the missed provoke. you, green one. I miss you. This is the provoke. Boom, and then David cut me off, so that's it. This is the provoke. <laughs> it's punchy. Yeah. It's provocative. It's like a 90s band name, like stained or punch or mud. Poison. Nice. Yeah, poison. Well, that's more 80s, I, I think. Anyway, uh, Arun <laughs> says, what's up? Arun, you are super fan extraordinaire. Uh, if we had whistles to give, you'd be one to get one. Uh, Provoke and Inspire podcast, calling followers of Jesus to radical faith outside of the church. This is an episode featuring all of the regulars, myself, Ben Pierce, Luke Greenwood in Poland, Chad Johnson in Nashville, and David Pierce in rusty old New Zealand. What's happening, fellas? I already said that, but say something again. Good morning. Good, good afternoon. Good evening. Tea sipping. Tea sipping. Yeah, beat them, yeah. beat them. Hey, I was just wondering, since since Luke's getting tea with Luke and David's got coffee with David, could I get track with Chad? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I feel like that'd be, you know, I don't oh. know. It feels like that'd go over pretty well, you know? I don't know, man. We'll have to ask our Colombians. <laughs> right. We'll have to think about it. Too soon. you have, have to edit that out, I think. I like this. Arun <laughs> says Chad is looking... Wait, I thought he said like he's looking mint. like a mint. <laughs> he is Either looking way. mint. I'm looking mintish. Yeah. You're oh, nice. I agree, anyway. Aruna. He is looking. You're welcome, Aruna. Yeah. Good night yeah. for me. All right, here we go. Provoke and Inspire podcast, calling followers of Jesus to radical faith outside of the church. Uh, one thing that you can do to be a massive support to us uh, is to rate and review this podcast. Now, we did actually get a rating recently, but I can't seem to get my screen scrolled fast enough. So Chad is just going to make <laughs> up what it says. Nice. Okay, what did, the, what did it say? I was like, oh, no, I don't know. How, I can't find it that fast. Okay, this is from... <laughs> All right, I got I it. Re- oh. All right, it's a five-star review left on oh, the yeah, 17th better. of May, 2020, and it says, this podcast is hilarious, straight to the point, brackets. Okay, maybe not the first 10 minutes, and that is Okay. Uh, is, it <laughs> always ends up with a call to holiness. Each episode is clearly centered on God, which means they don't shy away from speaking the truth. God is clearly in what y'all are doing. Thank you for your transparency, the encouragement, and the weird humor. Ah, that just warms my heart. Right, fellas? That's from Noemi, by the way, on May 17th. So, Hey, nice. I love hey, you, Noemi. Yeah, It'll thank be cool you so to much. see you again in Germany. It's not necessarily the same no way me, but maybe is. I don't, is it? it is. I don't know. Yeah. He doesn't identify himself clearly. Be awkward if it isn't. But either way, uh, one way you can help this podcast out is by rating it or reviewing it, just like was demonstrated. Uh, that helps a lot. Uh, Mike Ritter says it just warms my hives. Yep. Uh, hives plural. I just assumed Mike, because let's be yeah, honest. Yeah. He <laughs> has multiple like, hives. Of course. You're unlikely to have one. Uh, one thing that I was going to say is you should be part of the Steiger compact school, but it's too late. Right, too David? Late. It's Sorry. just too late. Yeah, we have, uh, we reached our capacity. We have a thousand, uh, uh, capacity and so with the small group leaders and everything we've reached it we have 850 students from 46 countries yeah it's wow. amazing so that is wild. uh clearly we have to do this again uh maybe we'll do one more southern hemisphere focused for the less extreme out there uh, but that is definitely something to look forward to in the future and for those that are signed up this is going to be awesome it's going to be probably the most unified leadership teaching that we've ever had because in the weird world we live in with the internet, we're able to do that. Uh, of course, the physical thing is better. We'd rather be in person with you at one of these compact schools or at the SMS, but we are doing what we can with what we have uh, during these cra- crazy pandemic times. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, the topic for today uh, is, a, is a serious one. Um, w- we were talking to Tommy Green not that long ago, uh, and Did he you? brought something up related to transition. And, and he was talking about the idea that uh, with this pandemic, a lot of people are, you know, wondering what's next. Mm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have lost their jobs. They're, they're, uh, they've had more time to think and to reflect. And, uh, you know, they might be thinking, is there, is this the time to do something else? Uh, and, and I think that this is a really critical topic because, um, I think we all want to have meaning in our lives. We all want to have purpose. We all want to make the most of the time that we have. And, and a dimension of that, 
uh, as it relates to God is, is to knowing his calling on our life. Uh, and, and then sometimes when that calling is taking a right or left turn uh, and when we're supposed to go with that. And so, uh, David, maybe starting with you, how do we just generally, um, wh- where do you sort of place the, the, the general topic of God's will, um, how to discern that? Uh, and then we can kind of talk a little bit about the idea of when should you move, when should you stay, and kind of how to how to tell the difference. Um, well, I think there's going to be always a fight to doing what God has called you to do. So um, I think part of of any successful life is not quitting. You know what I mean? Anyone who's called to ministry, and uh, you and you see that they've. God has used them and they're successful, it's because they just didn't quit. And so I think there's a part of perseverance that's required uh, if you're going to do anything significant. I mean, that's, you know, no real ministry happens without blood, sweat, and tears. Uh, But at the same time, it can be problematic because um, if, if God is, he might be calling you to something for a time, but if you're not willing uh, to recognize that times have changed you know, it's time to take another step of faith. Uh, it can hold me and keep me from that new thing. And, and I think it's very easy to start to find my identity in what I'm doing. And then I'm not even open to the idea that it's time for a change. And so I think that's the tension. That's the, that's the thing we have to figure out. Yeah, David, I'm not very uh, appreciative of what you just said, because that was my thunder that I was preparing (laughs) so heavily for the whole identity thing. And then all of a sudden you just said it so well. David just took 60 seconds. It just took everything we were going to talk about in the next 45 minutes. I mean, man, no, but but seriously, I do. I, I love what David's saying because especially in my case, I, you know, these things are tattooed (laughs) on my finger, (laughs) on my knuckles. Uh, For those of you listening, I'm showing off my come live tattoo on my knuckles. And I think that Chad real quick, was the original plan to get end on your forehead? Yes, it was. <laughs> but my they said my forehead is too shiny to do anything good with. So yeah, well, I heard uh, Nigel told me you, that you can't tattoo on a, on a forehead like that. That they said it's medically impossible. Is that true? Maybe on my nose. Yeah, that's true too. But <laughs> but the moral of the story here is um, is that I think it's actually a huge temptation to make ministry the same thing as my identity or to make calling the same thing as my identity. And I, I've personally dealt with slash struggled with that, you know, how, okay, God, you've called me at least for a season into one specific thing to the point where I have marked my body with it, but you may not keep me in that calling for the next season or the season beyond that. And I have to be okay to keep my hands open and say, God, this is my life. You do whatever you want with it, regardless of what I've stamped on myself or otherwise. So anyway, I just want to shout out to David for stealing my thunder. Yeah. One time, one time, Ben, David helped me move on from something, right? I, 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 maybe he thought I was getting stuck or something. Was that when you were doing your whistle collection club? (laughs) The WCC? The kazoo club? Similar similar to that time. Let Luke talk. Oh, wow, you from see, David? It's what? a new initiative. <laughs> I used to be in a band uh, called No Longer Music. I was the drummer. And I was like, wow, this is what I'm going to do for my whole life. And then one day David came to me and he goes, Luke, listen, we've got this new strategy. We're going to divide and conquer. So we're going to split the band and we're going to have three different bands. And so you go and do one in South America and somebody else will do one in Europe and somebody else will do someone somewhere else. I can't remember where the other place was. And I was like, okay, that's cool. So I went off to South America to do, you know, one of the bands. And then when I turned around, they were doing the band again, but without me. So then <laughs> I had to, I, that was how they moved me on. Hey, so nice. I didn't look, have much choice. Nice. But look, I wasn't being disingenuous. That, that's <laughs> what you should have done. And it's good. No, I we, know. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I know, know you being- did. I know you're being funny, but it's true, though. I mean, yeah. there's there's a time uh, like, for for example, for me, I thought I was yeah. going to always be based in Amsterdam. You know, I right. mean, I was I was I had no thought of ever leaving Amsterdam. And in fact, I really uh, there's I, I have a lot of dreams still about the city. It's like a, a, hmm. because I was so part of my 
what I felt I was called to do. And then after being there for 16 years and, you know, you know and, and my sons were born there, we're really, it really, uh, this is the place for us. God made it very clear that it was time for us to go. And it's not what I expected. It's not what my, my idea was of, of being successful and what God has called me to do. But it was a real crisis for me, and I had to be willing to 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 be willing to go. You know what I mean? Mm. And it was a it took a lot of faith. And then and then God had us go to the opposite end of the earth. He had us go from amp you know from Holland to New Zealand, mm. and you can't go any further away than that. I mean, it's as far away as you can go. Uh, but I it was very God made it very clear that that's where we were supposed to go. And when we went and we went to New Zealand our influence in Europe increased. It actually got bigger, mm. you know, which is counterintuitive. It's not what you would expect. And so I guess the, the, the point is God's way is always the best, you know, and, but we have to be willing mm. to hear when it's time to go. Yeah. Yeah. I actually found yeah. a picture from when Luke was in no longer music. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Pure skill. Yeah. That was uh, that was a better look, actually. He has the same hat. <laughs> well, I nice. was gonna say if you were if you put the real thing on, it would be yeah. worse than that. So. <laughs> but oh. hey, that that did keep Ben quiet for a for a moment while he yeah. was Google. Yeah, yeah, he was looking for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so let, let's try to look. This is such a critical conversation, and I think we live in a time um, where you, you know. This, this sort of meritocratic time that we live in, where it's a, a lot of who you are is about what you do. Um, and because of that, it really matters to people. And, and I think that this has even infected the church a lot, where uh, we feel very much like our, our faith is so wrapped up in, in the tasks that we perform or the success that we may or may not achieve. Uh, and so I, I do think it, it matters that we talk about when to move on. And that's kind of the title of this podcast is, is I think this could be a, a time for someone to launch into something new. Um, but I think we need to take a step back from that place and first talk about the role of doing at all. Like, I, I think that the world says you are what you do, right? You That's the first question people want to know. Um, but I think that in God's kingdom, it doesn't work like that. It's more of an inside out process. I, there's a verse that I'm constantly reflecting on, which is that you know, I am the vine, you are the branch. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will produce much fruit. But apart from me, you can produce nothing. And and to me, that this is just a brilliant um, tension that our faith is so often filled with, which is that, that in God's kingdom, we are productive. In God's kingdom, we are fruitful. It does matter what we do, but it, but it doesn't start with making what we do the most important thing. Ironically, we kind of have to let go of that a little bit uh, before we even really can step into what we're doing and not uh, in, allow it to enslave us and to become um, just that becomes our entire identity. Mm -hmm. And so, Luke, maybe starting with you, how do we first kind of sort out the role of doing at all in in, in the faith? Mm -hmm. How do we how do we get to a place where we're able to do things, but it isn't who we are? It's not in our own power, and it's it's a healthy doing. It's not a a, a doing that that is, is religious or, or in an attempt to validate oneself or to feel better uh, or to kind of um, uh, fill something. Cause we can all kind of do that, right? We, we want to yeah. fill something and we don't get to the bottom of that. And then it just doesn't really matter. We can go left, we can go right. We continue to try new things, but in the end of the day, we don't satisfy the deepest longings of our hearts. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, what you're describing is the difference between ambition and calling. Because ambition is a drive, and it's not necessarily negative. I don't, I don't mean to say, you know, ambition is negative. Ambition can be good. But if it's an ambition that is just simply uh, driven from, uh, from myself, it's, it's just a, about what, what I think and my dreams and so selfish ambition in that sense, and I'm pursuing that, then it's, it's void of God's presence. And, and that's where I think I start to lose myself, my I my identity becomes the activities I do. I don't know who I am anymore. I also think that it's it's actually hard to really completely separate what I do from my identity and who I am. I think we when we discover who we are in Jesus, along with that comes a calling. So I know who I am. I'm made in him. I know I'm loved. 
by him no matter what I do. And there's that, you know, uh, famous saying like, no matter, I, I can't do anything to make him love me more. I can't do anything to make him love me less in the sense that I, you know, he loves me for who I am, but he also calls me to do something with him. It, it's, you know, and that's what's awesome about the relationship with Jesus. And, and that is what I would call calling. It's when I understand who I am in God and I know what he's called me to do. And I might have read this before on a podcast. because It's one of my favorite quotes, but um, I'll read it anyway. It's from Oswald Chambers, um, my utmost for his highest. And it goes, um, it's easier to serve or work for God without a vision and without a call, because then you're not bothered by what he requires. Common sense covered with a layer of Christian emotion becomes your guide. You may be more prosperous and successful from the world's perspective, and you um, will have more leisure time if you never acknowledge the call of God. But once you receive a commission from Jesus Christ, the memory of what God asks of you will always be there to prod you on to do his will. You will no longer be able to work for him on the basis of common sense. So I, I like that because it's an inner drive that comes from him, from my n- knowledge of him, my identity in him, and it just drives me forward. And it's not, from, you know, from my perspective, it's not a heavy thing. It's an exciting thing that just pushes me on, fills me with motivation. So ambition and calling, those are two things for me that, that stand out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there's a, there's a freedom in it, right? I mean, we're asking the core question, how do you know when to move on? Mm-hmm. And I think that the goal should be that that you could quite easily move on, right? That that should ultimately be the goal. I, I think that we we want to get to the place where that deepest hunger of ours is filled in the only place that it can be filled, and that is in intimacy with Jesus. I I, I am an ambitious person. I am a disciplined person. I wake up early. I set goals. I want to achieve things, but I am I'm constantly haunted by the sense that. I don't want to just be busy for busy sake. And I want the why, Mm -hmm. the why to be so central. And, you know, one thing that really struck me reading or actually listening uh, to Shoe Dog, which is the Phil Knight story, the founder of Nike, is, you know, he tells this this long tale of struggle and risk taking and leveraging all of his finances and putting it all on the line for this company. And yet a consistent thread throughout the entire book culminating in the tragic death of his son at the end is he didn't spend enough time with his family. It's like this consistent thread. And he tries to kind of like make it seem like, well, you know, if I could do it all over again, maybe I'd do it different or, you know, but I, you know, you, you learn and you kind of do your best. And there's sort of a lot of Eastern religion that he kind of weaves into his narrative, but I'm reading that going, all I can hear at the end of this book is forget the stupid shoe company. Don't, neglect your family. (laughs) That's all I can read in this. And I'm not saying that (laughs) I'm not trying to say like there's a causal link between his lack of being there and his son's death. Although he does kind of allude to his son being quite lost. And then he dies in a, in a scuba diving accident, but you could just tell the way he talked about him. His son was pretty lost and couldn't find his identity and quit school and was kind of traveling the world and doing things. And, um, man, it's like, none of this really matters if you don't have the true source of satisfaction. And then from that, the cascading priorities, correct. I know Chip Ingram talked about it. Like you have kind of this cascading, you know, you imagine this fountain of water and it's like you, you get filled with your relationship with Jesus and that that cascades and allows you to then fill up that, that devotion to your wife or husband. Mm. And then that overflows into the devotion you have for your kids. And it's, it's ascending in priority. Chad, mm-hmm. does this conversation even matter if we don't get that sense of priority correct? Well, not. It certainly doesn't matter in the long haul, you know, or for the eternal kind of perspective. And I think that so much of it, you know, and one of the the thoughts or questions that I saw posted here in this thread, uh, the Facebook thread is, is like, how long do you wait? You know, essentially, it's like at sure. what point it have you waited too long and is it like uh and man it's a hard uh, it's kind of like saying um what you know what size is going to fit you for for a pair of pants or a shirt may or may not fit me but it, as it comes to um worst analogies on the planet that was probably just it but (laughs) but, (laughs) i'm calling myself out publicly for the dumbest analogy ever but at least recognize your own 
you know, finiteness in, in, in this. Um, I think it's a, a question of like, God, do I still have vision for what you put in my, in my heart? Yeah. And do I still have a, a, a passion for that vision? Or, and if I don't have vision and I don't have passion for it, then, I mean, I guess you could hypothetically stay somewhere for a really, really long time, but I don't think that it would thrive. And I, I would hope that you'd have people in your life that would say, mm -hmm. hey, hey, Chad, hello. That's a really, uh, <laughs> but, well, but, but, you know, what time? Uh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, but the point I guess I was trying to make is that, huh, man, I don't know. I don't want to, yeah, I derailed you. Sorry. No, 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 you're good. No, you're, you're good. I guess, I, I guess what I was trying to say is that there is a, I don't know. I don't know what a totally satisfied person looks like in Jesus, but I yeah. wonder to what degree there is a, a winsomeness and a peace. I, I don't know. I wonder like, like you you don't, you're not the band guy. You're not the, you're not the author. You're not the podcaster. You're none of these things. And so you're kind of, you're kind of able, if you stay, you stay, if you go, you go, but there is a, there is a lightness to the journey because you are just a foreigner, you know, on, on a destination to somewhere else. Your priorities are eternal and not finite. Your, your identity is not wrapped up in a vocation. And so it, it's kind of a counterintuitive thing because I think the people that are most released are the people that are also least attached. And when they can just be free to say, okay, God, what, what's next? And, and, and I don't know. And, and just trust that God has an overarching mercy for us. And often the thing I pray is God, you show me the path and then you make it clear enough for my brain to get it right. Because he's, he's merciful and he knows that I'm limited and I'm trying my best, but I don't think I've seen I don't know if you guys can comment on this, but for me, most of the time, it just, God just kind of leads me. I don't know. I, I, I don't feel like it's like God will bring me to this ominous fork in the road and then say, choose. And then I'm like, yeah, there's times like that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I feel like it's just daily obedience. It's refinement of character. It's caring about what he cares about. And then he just sort of naturally leads you on and, and brings people in your world to bring like the right piece of advice at the right time. I don't know, David, in all your years of doing this ministry, has there been such a burden to always get it right? Or do you feel like you've kind of just been able to do what's next? And then looking back, it's like, wow, that was a pretty sweet plan. But really, it was just <laughs> kind of a daily obedience that got you to where you are now. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's really important that on a, on a daily basis that I, I say, God, show me my heart because I, I can think I'm doing things for God and I'm not. It's selfish ambition. You know, Luke, you were saying that mm -hmm. there's ambition that's good. And I would say, well, ambition that's good is the kind that wants to bring glory to God. It, so yeah. if it's if it's not that kind of ambition, then it's not good. And mm -hmm. so for me, um, and it could be what I'm doing is OK, it's right, but but I'm starting to do it for me. And, and I have to, I have to throw it down at, at, at Jesus feet and say, I'm sorry. You know, I, I want to, mm. I want you to be glorified. But I think when I get that, when I understand the purpose of my, of my life is to, first of all, to be his child and then to make him happy, then it kind of, like you're saying, Ben, it frees you up uh, to not be so worried about things or, you know, like when I've seen the most fruitful times in my life is when I don't really care that much about the fruit of it. Um, it's like, okay, God wants us to, to have this, this prayer time, you know, with, and so I, I, but I don't care if that much, if other people join me in it, it's like, okay, cool. I, God has wanted me to do this. And if someone else wants to join, join us, cool. And, and, but then it'll, it starts to grow often and turn into something and I don't even want it to, it's not even my heart or desire. And I kind of observe what God is doing and this whole ministry will start. And, and, um, but when it's a striving thing, it, there's no joy in it. There's no, it, I feel like I'm carrying this heavy burden. And instead of saying, God, I'm just here to follow you and take the next step and whatever you want me to do or not do, that's fine with me. I just want to, I just want to make you happy. And I think in that kind of heart, uh, motivation, then you'll be successful, you know, at whatever God is asking you to do. Yeah. You Luke, know, Ben, oh, go ahead, Chad. I knew you were going to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, you go. Well, I would, I just wanted to tie what uh, 
Ben was saying just before this with Emma Odin's question, and you already mentioned her question, Chad, but it was about, um, Ben, maybe you could put it up for us just to remember it, but it was about the timing. How long have you waited um, for for moving onto something? Yeah, do you feel like God has ever had you in a holding for six months or longer? How long um, do you wait and pray for a transition? And um, and I, I was interesting when you were talking, Ben, about a bit like, it's not. It doesn't have to be this heavy thing where um, you, you're trying to figure out what you're supposed to do, and there's this divide in the road, and it's this way or that way. But it's more about kind of a long-term obedience, step by step. And so I think it relates in in this way. Sometimes I do believe God puts a vision or or, or a calling on your heart that is not for now. It and, and there's a and it requires patience. Sometimes there's something you look ahead and you go, wow, I think one day God wants me to do this, but I'm not seeing it happen yet. Or maybe God's calling you to change something and yet the timing's not quite and, and you gotta got to be patient. But I don't think it means, I don't know if God ever puts us in a place where we're not doing anything for him in a sense of glorifying him or we're not sure, yeah. living a life of obedience. I think the the step by step the day by day you were talking about ben needs to always be there and so i shouldn't be i think it's it's there's something not right about being in a place where i'm like i don't know who i am or what i'm doing and i'm just um waiting you know for sure there are times of doubt in our lives but i think that god's leading and the spirit's leading means that um day by day there are things he's calling me to do there are steps of faith he's he's asking me to take um, I've been, you know, to answer the question, I've like, I've had times where, so <laughs> funny, continue on from the story of leaving no longer music. Uh, my wife and I moved to Brazil, but as, even when we moved to Brazil, we both shared a, a, a thought or a calling that we felt like God was calling us one day to work here in Europe, but that we were supposed to be in Brazil first. And we waited five years, um, so, no, six years serving there in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and after those six years was when we felt the timing was right to go and, and develop the, the mission we're doing in Europe. So we had to be patient for that time, but we weren't sitting around waiting and we weren't lost. We were, God had a lot for us to do there and, and it yeah. was exciting uh, being obedient to him day by day there. But there was some patience in an aspect of what he'd called us to do. But I, again, that's such an awesome point, which is that, and this is what I'm striving for. And, and hear me when I say, I, I don't think I necessarily am there yet, but I, I don't believe God calls us to a life that's always looking ahead all the time. I, I think that's what the world puts in us is that there's always something around the corner and don't be satisfied. And you're always, you just, you always need, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, you know? And, and I was saying this the other day, I, I, uh, you know, there's, there's some people, you know, as people approach the end of their lives and as heroes of the faith end up dying. And I don't know if you've heard this, but Ravi Zacharias apparently is in his last Mm -hmm. hours days if not hours and man when when this it just it's it struck me you know whenever something like that happens these these figures that have been so incredibly influential i think it really um it brings to light that that what really matters it puts in focus things that that should matter and are important and i think part of it is that you can't always like live like that i think that there is a there is a a, a, a satisfaction in the present uh, that then allows you to stay or to go and to not always be living for tomorrow's reality. And I don't know if yeah. you guys like that, but I, I can sometimes be stuck in that where I'm always thinking about the next, the next tour, the next season, the next thing. And I don't want to be like that. And I, I can miss my kids in doing that because my, my mind is always on the next meeting rather than being physically present with them. Mm -hmm. um, so that I think comes I just, with, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Chad. No, just quickly. I just want to say I'm for sure guilty of that, Ben. And I, and I have definitely struggled with that. So yeah, I'm resonating. Yeah, I just mm. I don't know guys. I just feel this strong sense that 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 there is a simplicity in following Jesus that that allows you then to dream big, to take risks, to stay put and and, and just to trust in the providence of God that he if you come before him each and every day and and ask the question, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but every almost every single day I say, "Lord, let me not lean on my own understanding. Let me acknowledge you. Let you direct my path." I pray every day. You are the author. You are the architect. You tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm simple. I'm trying my best. And, and I want to be faithful with what's right in front of me. And you, you direct my steps. And, and I just, I just kind of feel like 
he has. I look back on everything I do, including this podcast. This wasn't some master plan that any of us set out to do. This was mm -hmm. just, you know, I was probably praying prayers like this. And then God probably just dropped the nugget like, hey, let's maybe you should try a podcast. You know, and then mm -hmm. it's only retrospectively, retrospectively that it looks like a good right. plan. I think about, you know, I do a lot of itinerant speaking. I didn't seek that out. I just started this simple little Bible study for a few people. I did that every every week for about three years, and then the small church um, had a transition in their with their pastor leaving, and they hadn't hired anyone yet. And they said, "Hey, would you be the interim pastor?" And so the small church they had me preach every Sunday for like six months, and it just launched me. Like, and it wasn't something I sought. It, it, it but it totally prepared me and taught me how to study and put a passage together. And so mm -hmm. I think that there is a lightness to following Jesus where He make him the priority, make being loving the people right in front of you, the priority. And then he'll, he'll take care of the macro steps. I don't know. That's been my experience. I think something you're saying, Ben, that's so important is that you, you do what's right in front of you. It's mm -hmm. not, it's like, uh, God didn't call me, you know, I, he didn't say go to Europe. And then I had to just pl plan and prepare and just work on that. When I was, when I was in, you know, Minnesota, when I was going to the university of Minnesota, he said, be faithful at your university, you know, reach out to the, to the people at your university and, and, and focus on that. And so that's, that was, you know, I just was in university and I, and I, God gave me a burden for the students there. And so I just tried to, to be faithful as a student at the university of Minnesota to my surroundings and to, to the people that I was interacting with. And, if I would have tried to skip that step, if I would have thought, no, God is calling me to, to, to be in Europe, I would not have been prepared for the next thing he was asking me to do. You know, I had to be faithful with what I, where I was now in order to be ready to do the next thing he was, he was asking me to do in the future. But yeah. it was not at this pressure. I was just very excited. I didn't, you know, I, if, if God would have told me, I want you to just spend your whole life at the University of Minnesota, awesome. focusing on reaching these students out of gone. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, what a great privilege mm. that would have would be, you know. So mm. it's more about being faithful where you are, I think. Mm. Don't you think? Yeah, it, it's it sounds like there's an aspect of um sometimes I think maybe we paint selfish ambition with um like uh oh, it's you know, God's plan for my life. That's the difficult thing, right? Sometimes we can um right have these big ideas of what I'm going to do in the future and I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. And and we, we call it God's calling or God's telling me to do this and that. And sometimes it, we're getting caught up in it and it's, and it is selfish ambition. It's stopping us from doing the obedience of what he's asking me to do right now. I know that's, I'm also guilty of that. That's probably one of the things I struggle with the most actually, if, you know, thinking about it is, is that, you know, mixing up something that maybe God is putting on my heart with, with wrong ideas of myself or, or how it's going to be in that, and that uh, selfishness or that ambition that comes with it. A Psalm that um, spoke to me a lot um, about that over the years is Psalm 131. My heart's not proud, Lord. My eyes are not proud. I don't concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me, but I'm, I've calmed and quieted myself. I'm like a weaned child with its mother. Uh, like a weaned child, I am content. And what you said, Ben, reminded me of that as well. That prayer every day of saying, God, I'm just, you know, hmm. I'm like a child. I have to be like a child. Help me to be like a child so I can really hear what you're asking me to do and not yeah. have all these, you know, big ideas of myself. <laughs> my, my son wakes up and all he wants to do is scooter. So I guess if that's <laughs> true satisfaction, then I better get my scooter shoes on. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I, Luke, Ben, you you know, you'll say something and then I'll say something. And then Luke comes in and he re always refers to you and doesn't refer to anything. <laughs> nice. that yeah, I've, I've been said. noticing that too. Have you I noticed like that, that Chad? Have you yeah, noticed I that? haven't noticed that. It's because <laughs> you're down on the bottom screen. It's on purpose. It's a yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's like I don't even know what to think about that. Um <laughs> yeah. but, well, but there, yeah, go Chad, ahead. Chad, no, that, I, Chad, you have to say something about David now. <laughs> Well, what other did you than like I just, that I said, I've Chad, just interrupted like? him like three times. So <laughs> what I say next better be really, really good. No, I was just going to say something about Luke. Actually, I, this whole time, ah! <laughs> <laughs> this whole time as Ben's been talking, and then Luke kind of like cemented Ben's point. Uh, you notice how two times I've, I've, uh, you know. <laughs> so I think there's so much to do with. with 
with contentment here. You know, like if if Paul, even though he may have been talking about um, financial resources or, or uh, provision, um, the idea of learning to be content, whether we have little or whether we have much, like if I applied that idea or that principle to vision or to direction, you know, whether I have a lot of direction or a little direction, I am content. Whether I have a little vision or a lot of vision, I'm content. A little passion, a lot of passion. Uh, I, I think that maybe, because this whole time I feel like this this tension that I think all of you feel which is we want to give a, a good answer. We want to give a valid answer. We want to help um, Emma and people like her really understand what God's saying. But it's like, oh, I'm not exactly sure how. And I feel like maybe we've, we're just like uncovering the gold in this conversation, which, which has so much to do with contentedness and mm -hmm. just learning that, that quieting of ourselves and that enjoyment of God and that like, man, he loves us and he, uh, he does have a plan for us and he cares for us. And I don't have to necessarily uh, like figure all this external stuff out. I just have to receive and be, be close. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, I also, I also think if you just make knowing God, hmm. uh, the, the, the most important thing you will get yeah. to where God wants you to go. So I would yeah. say well, to Emma, make knowing God, the priority and he will direct you. That often mm -hmm. that's if I get stuck, it's because I've made doing things more important than, yeah. than knowing God. That's the beautiful paradox, right? Yeah. Is that it, it's the losing your life. You'll find it. It's it's seek me and, and, you know, seek my kingdom, my righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. I think that's the beautiful paradox. But it isn't easy, though, right? We God will take us through journeys of testing that. Because mm -hmm. we can even begin with the right heart and, and end up in the wrong place. I know that there was a season for me where, you know, year after year after year, I, you know, I was the band guy and I would go on tour and, you know, I was, that was my identity. I was the guy on stage putting together these shows, playing these shows. And, and, uh, you know, then I started to have a family and that meant that I couldn't be as much the band guy as I wanted to. And I would go through these really, really weird patches where I would, you know, I'd leave, I'd go on tour somewhere, it'd be super intense, super focused, you know, all this camaraderie, all this intensity, you know, like playing show after show, all of this kind of, you know, really focused identity. And then I would come home and it, it just would be this weird thing. I would, it, it felt like in a blink of an eye, I went from like on stage in some crazy place, preaching the gospel to like mowing my lawn in suburban America, mm -hmm. just feeling like, what am I doing? Like, and the, you know, often the tour would keep going in my absence and that would just, it'd be so hard. Like I was like, yeah, this thing works and I have I'm not there and the gospel still being preached and the show still rocks. And I'm not even, you know, in a good way, I'm not the whole center of the universe. And I had to really work through that. I really did. And, but what I can tell you is for all of my bad attitudes and all of the times I complained and was frustrated my response was always the same, which was that when I would get home, I'd be jet lagged, I would be frustrated, but what I would wake up the next morning and I would, I have this dining room with a table and it would be early and I would say, God, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I don't like being here. I feel weird. But if, and if I do nothing but just pray in the morning and mow the lawn, that's fine. That's enough. Like if I'm just suburban dad, dude, and no one cares and I'm not cool, but I'm just going to seek you and build my life on that. And it just brought me so much freedom. It brought, brought me so much freedom where I didn't, I recognize I didn't have to be the band guy. I didn't have to be the podcast guy. I could, I could just be the, the heavenly father's son. And that was enough. And then I remember coming back to her with this fresh revelation and I just, it was so much better. I, I could enjoy it. I could, I was, so, it was so much more like healthy passion and, and less identity. And, and I was, I was able to appreciate it and I was able to celebrate others better and, and it'd be less about me. So it, it isn't that God doesn't test you. It isn't that you ha don't have to deal with these things. It's taken me time and I got a ways to go. Uh, but there's certainly, <laughs> I, I do, I feel so much more at peace um, recognizing that the world spins in my absence because it isn't about my action that spins the world. It's about my commitment to God. And then I can just play my part and be cool with that. 
Mm. Yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking, Ben, the, even the fact that I am here with the three of you was its own very painful, very slow, very trying process. Um, and so Emma and, and for anyone else out there who's struggling with God's will and direction and how long to, to make a decision or any of that, um, I would just encourage you that you're, you are 100% never alone in that experience. And many of us, even those of us in quote unquote Christian leadership, which again, no one listening to this can see what my fingers are doing, uh, are, (laughs) uh, are still subject to the same kind of challenges and insecurities and doubts and wondering. And so when I was like at my, probably like hard, the one of the hardest seasons of personal ministry life experience and wondering what in the world do I do next? Where do I go? What's God saying is this, uh, the exact same time that I a- almost like, uh, almost like God had a good idea paired me with Steiger <laughs> almost mm. like he knew what he was doing. Even it's so weird. It's <laughs> he's like, Oh, Hey, he's a, huh. I got, I have this son down there that's clueless and has no idea what's going on. And uh, I, I actually, but I know his heart is to see a revival of young people, all people experiencing me all over the world. And, um, a, mass outpouring of the Holy spirit on people's lives. Oh, I know someone else that actually has a very, very similar heartbeat as that maybe, mm. Oh, I'll just bring them together. So I think that a lot of times yeah. it, it seems like God brings us together when we're at our worst or we're, or we're like at our weakest or our darkest or our like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. And uh, yeah. yeah. So be encouraged. so encouraging to, to read the comments from Emma Um, Mm -hmm. You know, she talks about feeling lost in motherhood and, you know, the days with kids can feel less radical. And and what I will say to that is that, man, we, we live in a a time of, of, you know, we have these, these, this enemy Satan, right? He's a roaring lion looking to devour. And I think often the way he works is in whole patterns of thinking and getting our whole culture to buy into a narrative that just destroys people. And is there a greater destructive pattern right now than the devaluing of motherhood. I mean, Mm -hmm. honestly, I think it's just crippling people. I mean, could there be anything more important? And is there anything less considered less valuable, increasing less valuable in our culture? I can't even imagine, honestly. And and there's, it's a complex conversation that we can't get to here. I I think that um, it, there's so much to it, including, I think the, the, the flaw in in the male role. I think that this this whole industrialized version of the male role, where you leave at six and you come back at seven and you're too tired to do anything and then you go to bed. I that's not God's plan either. Mm. And so this idea that like we need to reclaim what it means to be a mother. So just suck it up and be happy to be alone all day. That that's that's garbage too. I don't. I mm. I hold that into as much of a of a flawed. Uh, you know, Satan inspired system is anything to separate the man from the house and make it a, a sole responsibility. I think one thing that's very interesting, and this is a different topic, but this pandemic, I think has brought families together and in, in a more beautiful way. And, and, you know, maybe <laughs> there shouldn't be a return to this sort of separation and, and the identity crisis that a lot of women face, because it isn't enough to just be a mom and, and talk about the enemy flipping what is true on its head and taking the most incredibly important thing and and making it something that has no value at all in our culture. And that's just terrible. But Mm -hmm. again, I do think that this is a burden that we all carry. And whether you're, you feel like you're have no value as a, you know, a mom or whether you feel like you're just competing in the corporate world or whether you're putting all of your hope and being in, you know, in the Christian ministry world and you have to be an influence or whatever it is. I think that, that uh, honestly, we all sort of carry around the same burden if we're trying to find our identity in these vocations rather than in that beautiful, simple relationship Jesus wants us to have. 
and then to have kind of a free, okay, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I'll do it. And from there, he leads us out. That's really what I've experienced. Yeah. And I think, again, it just ties really well to the to the concept of obedience, of understanding who I am in God. And then, like I was saying, for me, it is a bit hard to separate the two things. When I when I know who I am in him and, he, and there are aspects of what he calls me to do, including being a father or being a mother, then as I do that, it, it also it does speak into who he made me to be. So it's, it's it, it, there is a thing. It kind of flows together. And it's it's again recognizing wow go, day by day god what can i do today that will glorify you and we we in our culture and i think that's what you're saying ben separate that out we have the glamour like this is awesome this is doing god's will this is missions this is radical and this other thing is just normal life and and it's boring and it's a meaninglessness and nobody knows and and that's i totally agree that is not god's plan at all it's um, the things that God is calling me to do day by day, that is what is beautiful. And and that often means sitting with my kids at each meal. I mean, one of the things I'm loving about this lockdown is I get to have every meal with my kids, like breakfast, lunch, dinner. I'm there and I'm able to sit and we can talk about stuff. That That's a unique opportunity. I, I recognize that's a privilege um, to, to have that because, you know, we, we got to work as well. Um, and uh, we're often ha having to be away from home. But it's it's realizing how precious that is, the discipleship that goes on with our kids as 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 you know as mother or father, um, helping them grow, helping them learn. It's all of this is so important. It's as important as when I go out and do discipleship with a cool Bible study somewhere, or when we go on stage and preach. It's it's all obedience to God. It's so crucially important. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'll, but and also I think God made us. You know, he knows he made us a certain way uh, because we all like it says in, in the that we were in a, when we were in our mother's womb, we were created for mm -hmm. good works in advance. So, you know, God has put us on on this planet to do things and he's given us certain gifts and personalities and and uh, drives. Um, but we have to understand that his plan is the best. And so that's why when you find yourself in a situation that you're thinking, yeah, but I'm supposed to be over there. That's where I need to trust God and go, no, God, he knows me. He made me. Yep. And where he has me now is the best, you know? And I think mm -hmm. that one of the problems we can have is that we can put ourselves in this box and we label ourselves and say, this is what I do. And we're not mm -hmm. willing to even see that God wants to do something new. There's nothing sadder than someone who's stuck in the past. You know, they're, they're, uh, uh, you know, I've been to groups like that where they, they saw God move like in the, in the eighties and they were all, so they, they kind of were stuck in this kind of way of doing things and they weren't willing to move with the times, you know, the gospel mm -hmm. doesn't change. Jesus doesn't change, but the times have changed. And so they're kind of stuck, you know, because they can't see that maybe God wants to do something new in them and, and do new things through them. And I think that's really important that I'm always willing to let God, what is the new thing, you know? I'd be not just kind of stuck mm. in this box. Yeah. Yeah. And again, hey, yeah. Ben, I had something to say related to what David said this time. Really? So I really feel like I should say it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I, I think that's that was the core of kind of the original topic here was how do I know when should I move on? When yeah. should I stay? When have the times changed? And that is difficult, right? To know, like, when am I getting stuck? Like you were saying, David, the people in the 80s and they had this way of doing things. And, and how do I know when I'm supposed to move on? How do I know when I'm supposed to commit? And I was trying to think this this through um, earlier today. And I, I feel like when it comes to leaving, on one hand, I can, th there's a sense, I think when it's often when it's a positive thing, it's something God's calling me to do. It requires a letting go. It's sacri There's a sacrifice to it. It's like, okay, I need to move on. I need to let this go. And very often, it's it's often something that's going really well that God asks me to let go of. And it's not, you know. Um, the other side to that, the flip coin to that is running away from something right. wh where something's not resolved, something's not right. And I'm afraid or I'm uncomfortable or, or it's like, it's like something not right in me. And I run away from it instead of dealing with the problem. So I, I need to ask myself when I'm at that point of moving on, is this something God is calling me to let go of? 
Or am I running away from something, which is what our culture tends to do a lot in everything, this fluid aspect of our culture that's constantly moving from one thing to the next. So I'd say probably that our tendency, our natural tendency, especially in these times, is to move on and to move on from thing to thing. Um, and it's a running away. Another way of looking at it is the, the contrast between commitment and comfort zone. So it's like, should I stay because like I'm called to this and I need to commit even when it's hard? Or am I staying because this is comfortable for me and it's a, it's a comfort zone? So those are some questions that I, I think I can ask myself to decide, is this something I should move on from? Should I move to something new? Is God calling me to commit? Or am I stuck in my comfort zone? Should right. I be letting go of something or am I running away from something? It's understanding those different motivations of our heart somehow, I think. And I think community is massive in this because, you know, I've talked a lot about the foundation and the 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 feeling that needs to take place that you have the peace to stay, you have the peace to go, but either way, your satisfaction does not come from those things. Uh, that kind of gives you the ability to come and go. But often it is people in your life that God will give the sight to, uh, you know, to just because David's obviously very insecure and wants people to reference him. So uh, to, to reference David <laughs> yeah, here true. again, um, no, like you need people in your life who at the right time say the right thing. And and I think God is is gracious and he might repeat it if you need to hear it more than once. But probably some of the greatest piece of advice I've ever received, honestly, was from David about. I don't know, seven, six, seven years ago. And David said, don't make yourself all about the band. Don't be the band guy. He said, you are more than the band. And, and I know people that that's what they built their entire identity around. And then when the band went, they went and that was it. And it was just a simple piece of advice. Like you are more than just the band. Think bigger than the band. And I remember thinking, yeah, okay. You know, cause that's kind of my, that was kind of my entry point into the mission. Um, and it, it, it not only made me realize that my value wasn't from being in the band, but it also gave me the courage to say, yeah, what else is there out there that God has for me? And not kind of in a, you know, itchy feet, millennial sense, like, oh, I'm bored of what I was doing. Now I want to do something else. But it just helped me to realize that God is, is you know, gifted me in other ways. And then I started to explore some of those things. And, and what I can say with confidence is that there are a lot of people who, when this pandemic struck as artists, man, they were reeling and, and I'm not judging them at all. I mean, some people are in that season of their life. I was in that season of my life and a lot of them are far more successful and far more. That's more everything they do maybe. But for me, because of that advice, the Holy spirit speaking through that advice, I, I have so many other ways that I feel like I can serve and that God has prepared me and equipped me and sent me that honestly, I haven't even really noticed that the summer touring hasn't happened because of that advice. And I'm so grateful that I took it. If I'd said, no, no, I'm going to put everything into being the guy, you know, the front man for no longer music. That's going to be my whole heart and soul, man. I don't know. I'd be having a bit of a crisis right now because who knows when touring is going to happen again. So I do think, Chad, I mean, wouldn't you agree that having people in your life is so critical because God will often use them to give you that nudge to say, ah, stay or no, now's the time to go. Yeah, I mean, I think without, if you remove the community component, then anytime you remove the community component as as a Christian, <laughs> it's right. probably not going to work out very well. So <laughs> right. it's like, hey guys, I'm I'm off he over here stranded on an island all by myself and I'm killing it. Uh, you know, <laughs> it didn't work out for Jack Sparrow, probably won't work out for you. But the the seriousness of, I think, all of this and in, in obedience and just as we started this podcast in prayer before, before we, we began recording. Um, I just had a, a picture of a young man listening to this episode and the picture while we were praying was him with a gun in his mouth about to blow his brains out. And, and I know that's ex extremely intense, but that was the picture and that's the intensity by which I feel this. And, and I just feel like, whether it's specifically to one individual or to many that the idea of failure it is not big enough to break down what God wants to do. And so if that's for a specific individual, I would like for you to email me chat at come and live.com. And I just, I don't know. I just have a, a, 
uh, this like super hopeful encouragement for you that God's going to turn your whole life yeah. situation around and um, that he's going to show you what to do next. So, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. I, I don't know how else to do that without just going for no, it. But, no, no, um, that's, 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 you know, brilliant. and it, it, you doing that brings up an aspect of this conversation that I think we might need to leave for another time, which is that for all of my emphasis on um, making, knowing God, the most important thing and, and not um, being overly wrapped up in I in in sort of your the things you do. There's a ton of biblical precedent for the Holy Spirit powerfully leading and guiding us. Even you know not even but supernaturally. Lord, you know I think of Acts 16 where where Paul's like trying to go left and the Holy Spirit says no, nope, and then he's trying to go right and the Holy Spirit's saying nope. You know and so. I, what I'm not saying, what none of us are saying, is that God doesn't at times and in very specific ways guide you, like yeah. very strongly. And I've had moments like that. I I remember for a while, way back in the day, we, my wife and I were thinking of moving to Germany, and 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 I remember just laboring over this, and it was just so hard and so hard. And I remember, sounds weird, but I was in the shower, and all of a sudden, I just felt this incredibly strong impression. It's cool. I don't. You don't need to go. Like, I, I don't want you to go. It's fine. Like, cause I was just wrestling. Do I go? Do I not? Do I go? Like, I can't, it was like supernaturally powerful. Like it's cool. Mm. You're, you're, I'm just, just do what you're doing. You don't need to go. And I just, it just broke something. And I know that that is largely why we didn't go because I just felt like, no, this, I didn't, I couldn't feel this piece. Couldn't figure out why. And it was at that moment that it's like, God really brought clarity to my mind. No, it's not what I want for you. You should stay here and do what you're doing. And so there are times that we could all go around and tell stories, right? Yeah. I mean, there are times when God does very strongly speak to you, but I think by and large, he wants you to be faithful with right what's in front of you. He wants to make, you know, really have it be about loving him and being in a relationship with him and serving your family and serving your neighbors. And then he just kind of unfolds the plan before you. I've really experienced that. Uh, and then you look back and you go, wow, that was that was awesome. I always meant to do this. I, I wrote a blog not too long ago where I, I literally talked about how the major areas of my mission, every single one of them that I do, I did not plan. I mean, they were all like <laughs> complete kind of accidents, if I'm honest, like just stumbled into it. Wasn't sure what it was going to, whether it was going to go anywhere. Wasn't sure what it was going to be. And it's like the cornerstone of everything I do. And, and I feel like that's just so God, the way he works, because I really do believe in all of that. Mm. I have made a focus of, of, of seeking him and that truly has made all of the difference in my life. That, that's a really important combination. Just briefly, that combination of uh, being led by the spirit and the feeling aspects of it. Like uh, I think even in one of the questions there was the thing of, do I feeling, do I feel peace? Is that how I always decide? Do I feel peace? Need that. And then the truth um, of God's word and mm -hmm. of that daily obedience. And, and there's a mind aspect to it. There's a, there's a wisdom to it. We have to have those two things together in making these decisions. I think that's really important. Absolutely. All right. Well, uh, we weren't entirely sure what direction this podcast would go in, uh, but uh, I think it was, Yeah, at least I feel very encouraged by this conversation. Uh, I know that this is incredibly relevant. There isn't a person listening that isn't, you know, wondering, how do I make the most of my life? How do I be obedient to Jesus? There, I'm sure there are people listening who feel stuck uh, there are other people who feel that tug that they're trying to suppress, that God is pulling them into something else. And they're saying, ah, no, I don't want to go. Um, and there's other people who maybe everything was cruising along and maybe this will be the catalyst for them starting to go. Maybe there's something else. Uh, and so I, I hope that this conversation met you where you are at. Um, again, if you are completely perplexed by this conversation and don't know what to do, Luke take it from me. Steiger.org. Yeah. Yeah. Luke at Steiger.org. <laughs> Uh, he will, he will give you all the wisdom you need, but, but seek God, set your alarm clock early, get up and say, God, I don't know how to respond to this, but if I do nothing else, but just seek you that let that be enough. Cause that's, I've been there. We've all been there. I've yeah. been in that spot where I go, I don't know. I, I don't know how this all makes sense, but I'm going to seek you build my life on that foundation. And, uh, man, God is so faithful. He is so incredibly faithful. So, mm. all right. Uh, I was going to say, join the, uh, just out of habit, I was going to say, uh, go ahead and be part of the Steiger Compact School. But again, too late. <laughs> Sorry. Too late. Uh, Sorry. Provoke and Inspire Sold Podcast out. Community. 
Let me mention that. Um, a couple things to announce related to that. First of all, we're doing our first ever prayer time as a community tomorrow, 2 p.m. Central. I hope that hits your time zone well. Um, we're going to we're gonna go for that. We really want this community to be a place where you can come. And when we do breakout sessions, you can you can share where you are with this whole thing and, and what you're feeling God is saying to you. And we can pray with you uh, and ask that God would give you guidance. Uh, so go ahead and search that on, on Facebook, Provoke and Inspire Podcast. You'll find it. We'll give you access. Uh, join that prayer time. Uh, this week, uh, we were going to have tea with Luke, but unfortunately for various <laughs> schedule things, including the fact that we have John Mark Comer on Thursday, uh, we will be pushing him into next week. It shall be tea with Luke next week. Then it shall be crack with Chad the week after. Uh, berries with I ben. knew that was going to catch on. Uh, yeah, well, it's very catchy. <laughs> yep. You know how that is. Crack tends to catch. Uh, but anyway, uh, that is all. We love you. Don't forget to rate and review the podcast. And uh, I don't know, David, you got anything else to say? You seem like you got something to say. No, I, no I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll talk to you next time. Did I say talks to you? I don't know. It's been yeah, a long week. Talks to you next time. It's people. Monday. It's already been a long week. All right. Love y'all. Peace.